Hello and welcome to this, the final video in my August 2022 uh, Diamine Ink Review series. I've done a bunch of ink reviews uh, this month from the brand Diamine, so if you're not watching this in August 2022, go back and have a look. Uh, today's video is a little bit different. It's not an individual review. It's kind of more an overview of a set of inks from Diamine. Uh, it's a very, very chilly morning here in Melbourne, middle of winter, as I'm filming this, and uh, so I thought I'd brighten it up, and today's set is the Diamine Colt Pens Exclusive uh, Fresh Fruit Series. That contains eight inks, which are Livid Lime, Disdainful Damson, Gruntled Guava, Loving Lemon, Bashful Blueberry, Bored Banana, Wistful Watermelon, and Sultry Strawberry. So as you can see, these are eight fruit-themed inks with uh, really sort of playful uh, names that make use of alliteration, and it's, it's cute and it's fun. It's a really cute set of inks. Um, these are bright inks. These are not like your standard professional inks. Colt pens, uh, their main set that they have with uh, Diamine is the Deep Dark series, which are a series of inks, Deep Dark Brown, Blue, uh, Red, Orange, etc., which are designed uh, to be uh, more or less like really professional use inks. These ones, not so much. These are fun. These are bright. These are colorful. Let's have a look at them. So what I have done is I've put them all here on Tom River paper, 68 GSM Tom River. I've got them on a couple of other kinds of paper we're just going to have a look at today. These are, relatively speaking, wet inks. They're light, they shade heavily, um, and they perform quite well. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed from the perspective of the fact that, on particularly on fountain pen friendly paper, these look great. One thing is when you're writing with them or when you're putting the ink down in swatches, it looks very, very light, uh, particularly some of these lighter shades, but they come up okay. You can actually read them all on the paper and you can actually see them and make them out. So Livid Lime here uh, is beautiful. It has some lovely darker shading in it. It's got some beautiful lighter tones, very, very wet, as you can see. Very few of these in, this, in the little swipe that I do actually leave much behind. Um, Disdainful Damson has this beautiful, like, light blue, but with these little green undertones, which is really very attractive. Gruntled Guava, a really sort of pinky orange kind of color. I like it a lot. Now, Loving Lemon is really interesting. It's not yellow, it's all, but it's also not green. Uh, it's a really interesting little place in the middle there. And once again, nice shading, fairly light, one that I was worried about when I first started putting it on the page. I've used a couple of these in pens like over the last couple of months. I've had them for a while. Um, I did purchase these myself from Colt Pens. These, none of this is like sponsored or anything like that. Uh, just an interesting set that I saw that they had and um, I wanted to look at it. Um, Bashful Blueberry is probably the closest to a professional color. Uh, and it's quite nice. This is purpley blue with a hint of gray. It's nice. It's sort of dark enough. It's got shading. It's very readable on the page and it's a really unique, nice color. Bored Banana, great yellow orange. It's, yeah, I love it a lot. It's not, it doesn't shade as heavily as the others, uh, but it's got some really nice tones in it. Wistful Watermelon is this pinky red. Once again, really great shading. Nice sort of dark enough tone to be visible on the page. And then Sultry Strawberry, a very nice pastel pink. So these go between like the pastel sort of range and like neon-y bright sort of colors, which I think works really, really well for uh, ink that is themed on the idea of fruit. Now, this set sort of came about, in a way, kind of by accident. Uh, Colt Pens was talking to Diamine, and then before they knew it, this set happened. Like, it's great, and it's kind of fun, and as I said, to, to counter their Deep Dark series, I think this is a nice option. Let's just look at it now on a couple of other kinds of paper. The first thing I wanted to do was talk about how it performs here on, this is really low-end student notepad paper. Um, you can see all the colours look quite nice. Some of the lighter ones tend to sort of uh, not disappear, but be a little less visible on the page. Like I'm looking at lemon and strawberry there. Um, they are quite light. And when they're on this paper, which absorbs a lot of the ink and the color, we do get a bit of feathering and to be expected. These are relatively wet inks. And you can see that even for lighter shades, some of them come through quite heavily. Like I'm putting a lot of ink down on these spots. So like expect that, but even in the writing, quite a bit does come through. So these are not inks that are like going to be useful for, you know, sort of, 
everyday use. These are sort of more specialty inks if you're after really bright, vibrant colors and using you know, good fountain pen friendly paper and that kind of thing. These are gonna be really nice. Maybe also for art application, um, but what we'll see in a second on the Rhodia is just how these actually perform with water. So here they are on Rhodia. You can see they look beautiful, like the colors are rich and dark, well not dark, but vibrant and strong. Um, livid Lime, once again, that nice shading comes through. Now what I said about performing with water is I've done two water tests here. First thing is I draw a triangle, then I rub over it with a water brush, um, just see so how it moves. Because for me, that, that's an important element of how I use my ink in art. Um, like a watercolor, I draw something and then I move it around a bit with water. And then what I've done is I put water down on it, let it sit there for a few minutes and then dabbed it up. Um, so what we actually see for the most part is that these triangles remain quite strong. So just moving it around, it's not moving a whole lot. But when you let the water sink in and actually like get hold of the ink, it lifts a lot of it up. None of these inks I would consider to be water resistant, but also they're interesting for like this water movement. There's a little bit of movement around, and what I've done is as a control, I've got Diamine um, Syrah here, and I've moved that around with the same water brush pen, same written with the same uh, pen, with the same, you know, on the same paper, and then moved around, and you can see it moves around quite a lot more. Um, and so these, some of these like Disdainful Damson, and even Gruntled Guava move around quite nicely. Wistful Watermelon there looks great. Um, but a couple of these, it just it's almost too light for it to move around as well. So looking at these, Livid Lime performs very nicely. These hold beautifully on this rhodia, pa rhodia paper. Disdainful Dams in there looks beautiful. Once again, that lovely pink, orange of Gruntled Guava. Loving Lemon and Bashful Blueberry, both looking excellent. Bored Banana actually stands out nice and vibrant, almost leading towards an orange uh, on this, which is great. Wistful Watermelon looks more red here than it does on Tom or River. Inks will perform differently on different paper, depending on the you know the quality of the paper and how they sink in or how they sit on the top and all those kinds of things. And Sultry Strawberry looking lovely. I think it's probably the most pastel of the set. Uh, and it's quite nice, actually. I think um, in the right pen on the right paper, it's a nice little ink. If we look at the reverse of this page, once again, in the writing, as we would expect, nothing has sort of come through. Um, these perform well on fountain pen friendly paper, um, but they are quite wet. As you can see, once again, from these little, like swishes that I do, a lot of it moves and, you know, they are quite wet. So on lower end paper, in a big wet pen, you are going to get bleeding, you're going to get feathering. But on decent paper, I think you're going to be okay with this. So we're gonna do color comparisons now just to sort of put them all into context. Um, it's a bit of a mishmash of inks, you know, like, I, you know, a few that will be repeated just to give a sense of where things fit. Not looking for exact color matches, looking more for like putting these into context. So starting with Livid Lime here, what I've got is I've got Robert Oster Sublime, which has a little bit more yellow to the green. And then I've got something like Diamine Meadow here, which in some of the lighter shades of the meadow, you find in the darker shades of lime. Uh, but it's, you can see that it fits in a very light green place. Nice sort of halo shading there, which is quite beautiful. Next, I have Disdainful Dams, and now I've chosen a, another sort of blue-green, which is Kaweco Paradise Blue. And then Robert Oster's Torquay. You can see similarities in some of those lighter shades and some of the greeny tones coming through in Paradise Blue. This is, this is a light blue that has green tones. It's an aqua kind of blue. Uh, it doesn't quite lean to teal, but that's sort of where it sits. Gruntled Guava is actually a hard one to uh, match with. Um, I've just chosen, just for the sake of the exercise, sort of a reddy orange in Robert Oss's Tangerine. Um, you can see a few little similarities there. You can see it's a lot lighter. And I've got a couple of things to actually show you here because I wanted to put it alongside also a red. So Robert Oss's Fire Engine Red uh, because it's very much not a red. Um, you see just how orange that ink is. Uh, and then if you put it alongside Kaweco's Sunrise Orange, um, you see some of those orange tones. So it sits in a really interesting place. It's a pinky, reddy, orangey kind of color. Uh, it's very nice and it's, I think it's quite unique. Loving Lemon, interesting one. Once again, I'm gonna put it alongside Robert Oster Sublime just so we see uh, that um, greeny tone that's in there. And then if we put it alongside Yellow Sunrise, which is quite a yellow ink, we actually, but another Robert Oster, we see that it is very, very much not, not yellow. Uh, putting that into context again with another diamine, diamine amber here, you just see how green uh, that loving lemon really is. Bashful blueberry, so beautiful. A couple of interesting inks to put alongside here. I've got uh, Troublemaker's Purple Yam, simply because in some of these shadings, tones through here, we get a bit of a similarity. So it shows that sort of purple. 
And then Robert Oster Go Go, uh, which has lots of blues and things in it. Some, you know, you see little bits of purple and stuff, but it puts it into the context of this is not being a straight blue or a straight purple. It's kind of got gray tones. It's very, very nice. Bored Banana, more the yellow of the set. Uh, once again, Robert Oster Sunshine and Diamine Amber, similar. Um, so it's got, it's a yellow with these orange tones that really sort of come through in the darker shading. Um, I would consider this a nice yellow ink. It's dark enough to write with and be seen on the page, not for professional use perhaps, but you can definitely make it out. Wistful Watermelon. Okay, so now I wanted to put this alongside my stock standard red, which is the Watermelon Audacious Red. This is where you see some of those pink tones that we start to see, uh, which is nice, very nice. Uh, Robert Oster Fire Engine Red again. Um, Robert Oster's reds tend to have a slight pinky undertone. Uh, and I've just put it alongside like another Robert Oster pinky ink, which is Sushi here, uh, because uh, I think it's got some interesting sort of similarities in some of the lighter shading. Um, I'm not sure how visible that will be, uh, but there's like that little bit of shading just there on the side where it's very light. It's quite similar to the pink of Sushi there. And last but not least, we have Sultry Strawberry, the pink of the set, a very pastel pink. I'm gonna put that once again alongside Robert Oster Sushi there. But I also wanted to put it alongside a hot pink, just so you see how pastel it is, and that is Diamine Hope Pink. Um, so you see it's a pastel pink, it's got lovely warmth to it. It's earthy pink, um, once again, similarities there in the lighter shading of Sushi, um, but a very, very attractive color. So this is the a uh, fresh fruit series from Diamine, the collaboration with Colt Pens. Um, these are only available, well, at the moment at least, through Colt Pens. Uh, Colt Pens is a retailer in the UK, and they're my favourite Diamine retailer worldwide. I think their prices are amazing, their range is incredible. They have direct connection, obviously, to Diamine and th with their iridescent uh, series, and they've got like all that, you know, the, the series that they name after their co workers, like the one I just reviewed, Michael. Um, so this is Colt Pen's Diamine Exclusive Fresh Fruit, Livid Lime, Disdainful Damson, Gruntled Guava, Loving Lemon, Bashful Blueberry, Bored Banana, Wistful Watermelon, and Sultry Strawberry. These are available in both the 30ml and the 80ml bottles. The 30ml is what I got the full set, and they kind of look like this with their little nice little printed sticker on it. Uh, Diamond Colt Pen's Bashful Blueberry, um, made in England. The Diamond's been around since 1864, so you have a good track record. All their inks are safe uh, for use in fountain pens, and these ones are nice. They clean relatively easy because they're lighter tones, all that kind of thing. The 30ml bottle retails for about £2.35, and the 80ml for about £5.90. Uh, so really reasonable prices. If you're not familiar with Colt Pens and you're in the fountain pen hobby, uh, you need to become familiar with them. They are absolutely wonderful. So thank you for watching and thank you for following my Dye Mine month. Uh, if you've got questions, leave them in the comments below. Please get in touch on any social media or via my email, which is down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at or if there's a way you would like to support this channel by sponsoring your review or providing an item for review, um, I would really love to hear from you. In the meantime, and until I talk to you next time, enjoy your inks, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.